Good evening, everybody. My name is Ida Ashuri, and I'm a staff attorney with the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles. And today our topic is entity choice basics for small businesses. Firstly, the following is only intended for informational purposes only. This should not be considered legal advice. If you would like legal advice, you can contact us at the website lalegalhelp.org. So firstly, types of legal entities. We will go through also the key elements of each entity and the basic steps to start your entity. So firstly, types of legal entities. These are the different types of legal entities there are. There is the sole proprietorship, partnership, which includes general partnership as well as limited partnership, the C corporation, as well as the S corporation, a limited liability company, and we won't discuss today, but also worker cooperatives, nonprofit entities, and benefit corporations. So firstly, we'd like to know what entity is your small business? Is it a sole proprietorship? an LLC, a corporation, or are you not sure? So let's look at the key elements of each legal form. So sole proprietorship is a business with one owner. It's best suited for a single owner, someone that doesn't have concerns regarding taxes, and someone who has minimal liabilities. And that means they don't have a lot of exposure to being sued. Um, and they have insurance available to cover their business. So to consider the tax issue, this is the sole proprietorship is a pass through taxation. That means that the business owner is taxed as an individual. So at income tax time, the sole proprietor or the business owner reports all their business income or losses on their individual tax return. So some pros and cons of sole proprietorships. Uh, some pros are the owner has sole control over the business. So that means they are, don't have to deal with negotiations with any partners or other members or investors. It's the most simple and inexpensive type of business to establish. Some cons are, again, the owner is personally liable for all of the business debts and lawsuits that occur with the business. And by personally liable, that means that Creditors can go after the owner's personal assets. For instance, if in the business somebody becomes injured and sues the business owner for something that happens at their business, they can go after your home, your personal home, as a um, for for that type of uh, payout. So that's something to be aware of if you have a business that you think you could be exposed for liability. If you don't have things like property or um, things that creditors can go after, this might not be as much of an issue. So like if you rent, um, if you don't own you know, any property, uh, this might not be an issue for you. General partnerships. So these have two or more owners. They're best suited for people who have multiple owners of a business and they all manage the business together. 
This is again, pass through taxation, which means again, the taxes are coming out of your individual tax return. Um, again, you would like to be in a business with minimal liabilities. Um, so the partnership has to agree on the income, the deductions and credits that they share amongst each other. So that's something that you would need to negotiate with the, your partner. Some pros and cons. Pros, the losses and expenses claimed as personal tax deductions. So you can deduct those things from your personal tax return. Again, this is simple and inexpensive to create and operate, like the sole proprietorship. Uh, but the cons are, again, your personal assets are exposed to lawsuits. You're also liable for your partner's actions. So that means if your partner enters into a contract and that contract goes south, goes bad, you are liable for that entire contract, even though your partner entered into it. Um, and each individual partner can be sued for the full amount of any business debt. Um, though the partner can claim from other partners um, their shares of the debt and the creditors can go after your personal assets of partners. The other thing is individual partners can bind the entire business to a contract or business transaction. Um, the exception is if that third party knows that the partner doesn't have authority over the business. Um, also, um, in there's a partnership agreement and unless there's a specifically provided for in the agreement, if one of the partners dies or withdraws, the partnership may dissolve automatically. So we'll go into documents later, but partnership agreement is also important. Okay, limited partnerships. So a limited partner is works with a general partner. So a general partner is responsible for and liable for the business. The limited partner is like a silent investor. So think of like, for instance, if you have a restaurant and you own and run the restaurant, but you have a limited partner, which is kind of like an investor who wants to invest in your restaurant, but doesn't want to involve themselves in the running of the restaurant, then that would be like a limited partner. Um, this is best suited for two or more owners who uh, one with a passive investor. This again is passive taxation. The partnership agreement sets the income, deductions, and the credits. And in this situation, you do have to pay $800 at a minimum yearly California franchise taxes. And those taxes exist um, pretty much for the rest of these entities. So again, this is something for if you want to have an investor that isn't limited partner is not liable for anything and does not have a say in how the business is run. So they're just a silent investor. Again, the pros and cons are like the general partnership partners can claim losses and business expenses as personal tax deductions and limited partners liability can be limited to the extent of the partner's investment so they aren't their their personal assets aren't exposed like the general partner um, in a limited partnership and the cons are the same as a general partnership limited liability company. Here you have one or more owners and it's managed by the members or a board of managers. Um, this is best suited for 
single or multiple owners. There's again, pass through taxation, but you do have limited liability. Here, you do have pass through taxation, but you have the option to be taxed as a corporation, which we'll talk about later. There's an $800 yearly minimum franchise tax fee and self-employment taxes. So owners of an LLC are considered to be self-employed and must pay social security and Medicare taxes. Some pros and cons are your personal assets are generally shielded from liability in an LLC and any person or entity can become a member. That can include foreign citizens, other LLCs, other limited partners, et cetera. Some cons are there's an exception to personal assets being shielded, but that's only in certain cases of intentional negligence or, um, you know, involving um, express, uh, intentional acts and breaches of fiduciary duty. So basically sort of, you know, bad acts. Um, but another situation like the partnership is any member of the LLC can bind the LLC to a contract or a business transaction. Um, so you are liable for the actions of the other members. C corporations, they are one or more owners and the owners are shareholders. This is best suited for single and multiple owners. There is again, limited liability, uh, but because of the structure of the business, it's more appealing to outside funding, especially venture capital, uh, tax considerations. This is a situation where you have what's called double taxation, which means you're taxed on your profits after deductions, and the shareholders are taxed on their dividends. So um, the taxation also depends on whether or not you're an S corp or a C corp. There is again, the minimum $800 franchise tax that can increase depending on how much profit you make. Um, the owners who are also employees, their salaries are taxed on individual tax returns. So if you're looking for investors, a corporation can be a better legal entity, but um, it's, you must consider the big taxation burden when it comes to corporations. And just to repeat, this $800 franchise tax it's a minimum and it's required every year as long as your business exists. So even if you have an LLC or a corporation and you make no money that year, you still have to pay that $800. Pros and cons, corporations are legal entities separate from their individual members. So you are shielded from liability. Um, you're, it's easier to get funding from large investors. The cons are the administrative duties or setting up and uh, maintaining a corporation has a lot of requirements. You have to follow corporate rules. You have to follow rules issuing stocks, um, electing uh, officers, holding regular meetings, keeping minutes, um, all these other things. And you have to comply with securities laws as well. So it can be quite complex. Um, also, even though you're shielded from liability, uh, in certain situations, just like with the um, limited liability company, you can be liable in a, what is called piercing the corporate veil. And that's when there's some, you know, egregious acts or something is not being followed in the rules. 
So um, there are situations where you can be still liable. So it's not 100% guaranteed. S corporation. So this is a more like a closely held for-profit entity for federal tax law purposes. Um, this is better for smaller family businesses. There's pass-through taxation and limited liability. Um, the, there is some tax benefits to an S corporation. So some people who have LLCs might want to do an S corporation. This is something you want to talk to an tax attorney about though, but, um, Again, it's subject to the $800 franchise tax. So it has pass-through taxation, not the double taxation, like the C corporation. Uh, shareholder profits are allocated according to the percent of the stock that's owned. So, which is not the case of LLCs and partnerships. And the owners who are employees are paid reasonable salaries. So different uh, pros and cons. The pros are, again, the pass-through taxation. Cons are there's a lot of different rules for S-Corps, and if you don't follow them, the S-Corporation is nullified. So that's something important to keep in mind. Um, you cannot have more than 100 shareholders. You cannot be publicly traded. There's restrictions on who is a shareholder. Uh, for instance, you have to be a citizen. Uh, they can be expensive to create. And again, there are burdensome corporate administrative duties like a C corporation. Um, and no shareholder can be another corporation, an LLC, a partnership, um, or a foreign citizen. So again, there's a lot of requirements and you want to talk to a tax attorney about forming an S corporation. Um, and if you don't meet any of these requirements, you lose your S corp status. So now we're gonna go over basic steps to start up any of these entities. So we will first go over different legal forms. So first you're gonna choose which one you want to pursue, uh, either a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, et cetera. So first you need to choose a legal name uh, importantly, you cannot have the same name of another California legal entity of the same legal structure. So if you have a Joe's Donuts that's a sole proprietorship, you can still have a Joe's Donuts that's a corporation. The Secretary, Secretary of State must approve the name. And there are specific naming requirements, um, but they only apply to LLCs limited partnerships and corporations. So there are a lot of different requirements for businesses, different businesses. So for sole proprietorships, you, uh, you have to use your birth name in the name of the business. So for instance, Ida's Cafe, or if you don't wanna use your personal name, you register a fictitious name with the city, which will we talk about in the next slide. General partnerships have no naming requirements. Limited partnerships, they must include the, the terms uh, limited partnership, LP, or L.P. Corporations must include corporation, company, Incorporated, Incorporation, Limited, Corp, Co, Inc, LTD, PC, 
or professional corporation in the name. And a limited liability company must include limited liability company or the abbreviations L.L.C. or LLC. So do you have a fictitious business name? So um, let's talk about registering the fictitious business name, whether or not it's a sole proprietorship or general partnership. So basically the fictitious business name, since some of you asked what it is, is just a fake name for your business. So for instance, if I, instead of having Ida's Cafe, you could just have um, wrote uh, something like a Bouquet Cafe or, or um, Peacock Cafe and something made up. And this allows you to not have to use your personal name. So you have to file a fictitious business name statement with the county recorder clerk's office. And you can actually do this online very easily. So you don't have to actually go in person to the office to do this. And there's a website devoted just to the fictitious business name. Um, so that's for sole proprietorships or general partnerships. Uh, regarding LLCs, limited partnerships, and corporations, um, if you're operating under a different name than what you registered with with the Secretary of State, so all of these entities have to register with the Secretary of State. And in that situation, um, if your name differs from what is on your documents, then you do have to um, get a fictitious business name statement with a county recorder's clerk's office. If you're using the same name that you have on your documents, then you should be fine. So the next we're gonna talk about the documents that you have to prepare and file. So all entities with the exception of sole proprietorships have to file documents with the Secretary of State. So uh, a partnership has to file a statement of partnership authority. A limited partnership has to file a certificate of limited partnership. A limited liability company has to file articles of organization and a statement of interest. And a corporation has to file a, articles of incorporation. So um, these are all, uh, documents that are required by the Secretary of State. And there's going to be ongoing requirements. So for instance, the statement of interest, you have to um, update with the state, I think every year or six months, depending on when you, um, how far along you are with the, the company. So um, that's also something important to keep in mind. The Secretary of State's website though does go over all of this when you register. Um, you also have to have internal organizational documents. So these documents don't have to be registered with the Secretary of State. You don't have to provide them to the Secretary of State, but these are very important because they're basically the rules by which your organization um, follows its um, uh, business plan. And um, if you don't have something like this, you can be in trouble and it can be very difficult if there's a you know significant legal situation and you don't have any rules to follow. Um, and there they are also required by law. So for a sole proprietorship again, no documents required. A general partnership, you need a partnership agreement, like we had discussed earlier, that defines you know how much income each partner gets. Um, a limited partnership has a limited partnership agreement. Um, a limited liability company has an operating agreement. 
a corporation has bylaws. And again, these documents can be really important, for instance, if somebody leaves one of these organizations. So I discussed earlier, if somebody leaves a partnership, they can automatically be dissolved if you don't have something in the agreement that says otherwise. So general partnerships, again, file a statement of partnership authority with the California Secretary of State. You prepare a partnership agreement and that summarizes the obligations of the partners and controls the operation of the business. So if you happen to not have a partnership agreement, it's gonna to default to the California's version of the revised Uniform Partnership Act. So you are beholden to use that. Limited partnerships. So uh, you must file our certificate of limited partnership with the California Secretary of State, and you must prepare a limited partnership agreement Without a partnership agreement, again, it defaults back to the revised Uniform Partnership Act. For a limited liability company, uh, organizers must file articles of organization with the California Secretary of State and members enter into an operating agreement or a limited liability company agreement, which governs the relationship between the members and the running of the business. So um, again, the operating agreement doesn't have to be filed with this Secretary of State, but it should list things like how a member can join or leave the LLC, how members vote, um, what stake each member has in the LLC. And again, this is important because it governs how the LLC governs itself. And without this, um, things can get messy. Uh, for a corporation, you have to file articles of a corporation and create bylaws. And you also have to hold a meeting where your shareholders elect the board of directors. So corporations can require many documents. You have to establish a board of directors. You have to have regular meetings and obtain different waivers and consents from applicable state agencies. Um, and as a corporation, you have to do the things like a corporation and file an election with the IRS. Also, un unless you're a sole proprietor, you have to obtain an EIN, which is an employer identification number, uh, if you're at these other entities. So, and you can again do this easily online at the IRS's website. And you file a form SS 4 with the IRS either through mail, fax, or even over the phone. So it's kind of like a number, social security number for your business. You also need to obtain a local tax registration certificate. Basically that's known as a business license and that's something you need to obtain from the city of Los Angeles. And um, most cities require this in order to register your business regardless of what type of business you have, structure or size. You should also obtain the correct permits for your business. So, for example, if you are going to sell physical goods to the public, you should obtain a seller's permit from the California Board of Equalization. Um, businesses that only provide services are exempt from that. Um, Having this permit allows you to collect taxes to pay for sales tax. And um, you can also obtain a settle, seller's permit through the 
the Board of Equalization's website or apply in person. Uh, www.boe.ca.gov. You should also look into um, zoning permits um, or agency permits from the health department, fire department, police department, state and federal licenses. Uh, what's nice is you can go to calgold, C A L G O L D dot C A dot gov. And that's going to show you what licenses and permits you need for your businesses. So you enter your business type and location, and um, it returns a list of the licenses and permits you'll need from the local um, to the federal level, along with the contact information for affluent agencies. So very helpful website. So that's our presentation for today. I'm happy to uh, take any questions at this moment. Um, you can also type in your question in the Q&A chat. Um, I see one right now. Are payment plans available for the $800 tax fee? That um, I'm not aware of because it's just, this is with the Secretary of State. So um, I don't. I would assume not because it's a it's like an annual fee, um, but I would consult the Secretary of State's website regarding that question specifically. There's another question in the chat um, that asked. Um, I mentioned C corps are easier for outside funding as opposed to LLCs. Can I elaborate? Uh, does LLC limit potential outside funding for investors' grants? So um, you're not limited to funding. Venture capitals, capitalists just tend to like uh, corporations uh, because of how they can invest versus uh, uh, through LLCs. And um, this is more for people with like tech companies so I don't think that you're not going to be able to get investors with other corporations or other um, entities. It's just uh, specifically really for venture capitalists and, and tech generally. That's what the case is. The next question, um, I checked the website and it doesn't include business owner legal issues for free service. How do we apply for help with legal services? Um, I'm not sure. So it would be lalegalhelp.org. And yes, we we help small businesses. So uh, definitely double check or call the free helpline, but we specifically help small businesses. Um, and so you just apply and the issue is um, you have to fill out the form online. And then once you fill it out, then um, we can contact you, but we need your information first because we make sure, we need to make sure you also are qualified. What's the percent of tax the solo pays? So um, I don't know that question, but um, that your taxes just depend on your income. It, there's no uh, franchise fees or anything. So um, that would be something you would also talk to an accountant or a tax attorney, because it just depends on your business. So you're, there's no flat taxes. It just depends on your income and your deductions of that year. Does legal aid help create nonprofits? We actually do. <laughs> so, but that's a different branch. Uh, so we, you wouldn't go to the LA Legal Help website. You would go to LAFLA, L-A-F-L-A dot org, and you would uh, request help through there. So that's a separate um, site. Do we have any other questions? Very happy to answer any more questions anybody has. Can people with green cards be shareholders of corporations or must they be American citizens? So the only limitation was with S corps. Uh, other entities do not have this limitation regarding citizen being an American citizen. 
So it's only with S corps that there's this requirement. What is a business tax registration certificate? That's basically what people call like a business license. And that's when you register your business in the city. For instance, every business is required to register within the city of Los Angeles that's operating within the city of Los Angeles. You get a certificate when you register with the, with the city and you would just do that online or um, you could go in person as well. I live in the city, but the website says I can only receive services if I live in the county, is this correct? So you no, you just need to live in the city of Los Angeles. Um, but if you live in the county of Los Angeles, you can still be assisted by uh, one of our partners. So really, uh, at a minimum, you have to be in the county of Los Angeles. Um, and that's your business has to be located there. Please uh, follow us on social media and go to lathla.org. We do have a small business project website there where we will upload uh, more documents and um, PowerPoints as well. So, and we will also announce our any other events as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending this presentation. I'm glad that this was helpful. I hope you all have a pleasant evening. Thank you.